Hi, everybody. Thomas Miller on the Fun Astrology Podcast, kicking off the new week on July 24th, Monday. Glad you're here. Thanks for stopping by. Yes, we have a video today that's out on YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. <laughs> it's, it's quite crazy. Did I go nuts last week? Yes. Well, I'm glad you guys are loving the videos, and we will keep that up, and uh, they'll be supplementing. Not every day. In fact, I might, you know, I might do one on the Venus pentagram. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But otherwise, I'll see you on video next on Thursday, outside of today. Now, the sky. Wow, this is so cool. Last week was so stacked and packed with energy. Venus retrograde was on Saturday, and then you walk back from that. The sun entered Leo on Saturday night. Then the sun opposed Pluto on Friday. Saturn opposite Mars on Thursday. The nodes changing signs on Monday. I mean, it was one of the most stacked weeks of the year, no doubt. And especially with these major aspects. This week, we're going to absorb because there are very few direct aspects all week, seriously, except for the moon. The sun is now in Leo, so a big happy birthday to all you Leos in the month ahead. Summertime in the Northern Hemisphere. I've heard you, some of you folks from Australia have left comments. It's cold down here. Well, it's warm up here for most people. In fact, we're having all these heat waves across parts of the United States. Time to shine. Leo season. Time to put it out there. Time to acknowledge the kids. Go play with the kids in the park or the swimming pool. I know you guys south of the equator, you're like, no. <laughs> but here is a month to focus on the self. Focus on our ego self. Focus on putting yourself out there. The sun is with you, and so is the energy. But structurally, everything else in the chart that we dissected last week is still in place, pretty much as it was then. Now, tomorrow we do have a couple of things. At 5.30 in the morning, tomorrow, Tuesday, Pluto which of course is in retrograde, squares the nodes of the moon directly tomorrow morning. We've had our eye on this forever and ever and ever, right? I mean, we've been talking about it kind of months back, said this is just a permanent fixture, and it will move so slowly away, will still be a fixture into basically through November of this year. And then finally, I think we'll have an orb where we can say, okay, it's no longer, that's just five degrees, really five degrees away, so at least it's separating theoretically in astrological terms that it's getting weaker progressively, but they move so slowly that it's just going to be continuing to bake, and every planet that changes signs, including the moon, between now and the end of the year, is reckoning with the nodes of the moon square to Pluto, because they are both within five degrees of a sign cusp, so they are goosed and juiced. And whenever a planet changes signs, boom, they're there in some kind of aspect. And it's also every two and a half days with the moon. Do you not think that in the undercurrent of maybe things you can't see or maybe things you can see, there is this air of transformation, massive transformation. That's where I think we're headed. And it just the chart confirms it in so many different places. But hey, let's talk about a bright spot in the chart that came up on Ray Merriman's episode on Saturday. Steve Forrest also wrote about it in the Book of Air, I believe, the Venus Pentagram. This is a phenomenon that's just of note. You probably are aware of it, but here's kind of how this works. is basically Venus has an orbit of 224.8 days. I'm reading this from earthsky.org. I just searched it up and I thought, let's get something that describes this really well, and this is as good as it gets. From an astronomical perspective, of course, they don't acknowledge astrology, but this is a, a phenomenon in the sky that from an Earth-centered perspective, every eight years from, so if you consider Earth, the Sun, and Venus, Every eight years, Venus returns to the same place in the sky on or about the same date. And you want to convince me that all of this is just random? Okay. <laughs> so here's the deal here from Earth Sky. This is known as the eight-year cycle of Venus. And it stems from the fact that 13 Venusian orbits, or 13 times the 224.8 days, nearly equals eight Earth years. 
As a matter of fact, the cycle was known to and of great interest to ancients, such as the Mayan. Today, many call it the pentagram or the petals of Venus. So, the five-sided figure, the pentagram, is because over these eight years, each relative position of the Earth, Venus, and the Sun occurs five times. Then over the next eight years, they repeat five times, almost identically. Now, you can see this online if you just search the Venus pentagram images, or there's a really cool YouTube video that shows this unfolding as the alignment of the Sun, Earth, and Venus hit these points every eight years. Astrology is built on oppositions, right? So when you draw that line, it creates a pentagram. Just more evidence to me of the beauty and the majesty and the symmetry of what we study and see in the sky. Just one other note on the pentagram itself. It kind of gets a bad rap sometimes because of its use in modern times. But if you go back and do some research, you'll find that this has been a common thread of symbolism of spirituality, including and up to about the Middle Ages for Christianity, represented the five wounds of Jesus. So wherever you are with its current use, I would just say go back and take a look because what the sky is showing us is a symbolism that has pointed to our connection with or relationship with highest source for pretty much all of documented earthly history. And that's the as above, so below that's being reflected in the sky. It's saying here's the symbol reflected by love. Now, the only other consideration that we have between now and Thursday is tomorrow, again, at just shy of 1 p.m., the moon enters Scorpio. And that's after a one-hour, 50-minute void, of course. So, I, too, as a good Scorpio, am going to go void, of course, <laughs> for a couple of days. How about that? Hey, I think I've earned it, right? Last week was a busy week, and I'm going to recharge my batteries. So I will see you back on the audio podcast and the video podcast on Thursday. I send you off until then with love. Have a great first part of the week. 